Love Truth presents the Parent and Family Resource. This presentation is about principles and why they are important. Aloisa discusses Divine Truth Principles in the Parent and Family Resource. How principles can be applied to many varied events and situations and why they are important. Presented on the 2nd of March 2021 from 10am in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hi, I'm Eloisa. This video is about principles and why they're important. Principles are important because they can be applied to any situation that you come across. For instance, the principle that child children are reflectors and children reflect the unhealed emotional injuries of their parents or and the environment that they live within. So they might be guardians or you know other adults in the environment. As a principle, you can take that and you can go, okay, under any circumstances, anything that's happening with a child, if there's any behavioral issues, if there's anything going on, any anything at all, you can say, all right, well, child is a reflector. What are they reflecting about me right now in this situation? And then by feeling what's happening for yourself, you can figure out what's going on. There's an experiment you can do where literally if you just stop and you feel in that moment, if you hit on the feeling that is specific to you. Now, if there's more than one adult in the environment, it might be a bit tricky because they might be reflecting a number of different adults collectively. But if you do it on your own with, with children, you can actually feel about, wow, hold on, what in me is being reflected here by the child? And you can, if you feel about it and you become more sensitive to what's going on for you and you hit the right thing, the, the behavior of the child will change or will be different. I might go into something else because you've got another feeling to feel or whatever, but it also might stop. So for me personally, I had some experiences where literally I was just honest and truthful with myself about what I was feeling and what was happening for me in the moment. The children went from chaotic, like just making a mess everywhere in the house, to actually just stopping and quietly playing. And this was a beautiful feedback system for me. And over time, I started to see it more and more and more because I gained the feedback by just stopping and going, okay, I feel, and whatever it was I felt. So I feel so angry about, and I, you know, feel about what it was. Like, just had a feeling of it. It wasn't necessarily expressing my anger. It was just by owning the fact that I was angry about whatever because I actually connected to the fact of like, I am angry in this, this, in this example, then the children responded to that and they no longer had to reflect what I was denying. So this was a very important principle and, and lesson for me to learn was that, wow, hold on, if I'm not being real and truthful about how I feel and what's happening for me, then my environment starts having to, you know, to try and reflect that to me in order that I can get the feedback to do it. So when you're, if your house is like in a total chaos and there's a whole lot of behavioral issues, I suggest taking this principle of, all right, my child is reflecting something in the environment. Now you can be like a super sleuth, a detective. That's how I kind of looked at myself and went, all right, well, what is it? Like what in me is creating this situation? Why do I want this in my life? What's going on here? What is happening for me right now that these children are trying, you know, via God's laws are uh, attempting to show me? Because they weren't thinking, oh, mum's this or mum's that, I'm now going to do that. They just responded. So they're like little, like they're like little response units. And they, they are like, well, got to respond, got to respond. Something to learn about love here. You know, mum's not doing, this, this isn't loving. All right, got to, you know, let's, and they're not even, children aren't thinking about it. It's just the way that the soul responds to another soul. So I talked earlier about soul, how you have a soul, and that's the real you. That's your passions, desires, memories, feelings, emotions, everything in it. All of that is coming out to the world, if you like. It's all, that's what people feel from you. And so sometimes, like I know in the past, I'd be like, well, why, why is so-and-so like have that reaction to me? Because they're responding to something, you know, that they, in them that they feel with me. Um, and I know, and for me, again, if we take it back, because, Another principle is that looking at yourself first, always looking at yourself first. But when anything happens in your life, you are the common denominator. You are the main character in your life story, if you like. So that if something happens in your life, there's something that you can learn from it. And there's something in you that is, 
helping to create that. So that's a pretty big concept that your soul is super powerful. Like I remember uh, Jesus saying via the teachings of divine truth one time, your soul is more powerful than the sun. Like that is huge. <laughs> that is one massive soul. And I don't think that we really think much about our soul. You know, we don't see, see all the interactions that are happening, but we don't even have to say anything and our souls are communicating. And this is something so important to see with children is that your soul is already communicating with their soul. They're already responding. So from the time they're conceived in the womb, they are already absorbing things from the environment, from their parents. They're absorbing all of those things. They're absorbing your unhealed emotion. They're absorbing how you feel. They're absorbing your beliefs. They're absorbing every single thing. And they're absorbing it via their feelings. So once they pop out, then they're just responding to all of those things that they've absorbed and to what's now happening in the environment. So if you and your partner are, you know, at odds with each other or don't have a very good relationship, you know, they're going to respond and try and help you to see that. If you have a lot of fear, you know, your child's going to respond to that. And depending on their personality and nature will depend on how they respond to that. They may rebel against it and do a lot of things that, you know, you feel fearful about and then you'll try and control and shut them down. Or they may just become very, very passive and withdraw. Like they're depending on the circumstances and there's many many different ways that a child might respond but the child will respond perfectly for you so for example as our children grew up what I've noticed is that I personally have more of a uh, a response if you like like I I will I have some injured feelings about you know, underhanded sort of manipulative te techniques when people are angry, like, you know, they'll be like, I'm not angry, but underneath they're, they're quite passive aggressive. And that affects me a lot. Whereas my ex-husband, he, if you're overtly angry with him, he, he doesn't like that. And, and he, he get, you know, he, he wants to stop that kind of feeling. And the children would respond differently to each of us. So they're often passive aggressive and project a lot of emotions at me, whereas they might be more overt with their dad. And that, you know, it, when you reflect upon that, you can see, oh, wow, isn't that interesting? You know, it's a perfect attraction for me to actually see some things about myself and to reflect and to change, you know, to, to actually have the opportunity to change, which is a, a pretty amazing gift. So, yeah, the first um, two principles are one, children are reflectors. And you can do that. You can just be, look, okay, all of what's happening in my life are just effects of certain causes. If you can find the causes, you can change many effects all with one go. Um, the second one was to look at yourself first. Always look at yourself first. What is the attraction for you? Why is this happening in your life? Why are you creating this? Because your soul is a powerful, powerful creator. And you are creating what you have right now. And that's the first thing to look at. What do you have right now happening in your life? How do you feel about what's happening right now in your life? What are these children in your care? Or, and if you don't have children, animals also reflect. They don't have a soul, so it's a bit different. But, um, you know, your partner, other people, all of them are feedback systems for you to learn something. And if you apply the principle of look at yourself first, it can apply to any situation and you can learn some valuable information about yourself. And then you can make some decisions on whether you want to change or not or and you know how it actually feels to be yourself and be doing the things that you're doing in your life. 